Before we start, I have, for the sake of demonstration, just mocked up my old setup. Uh, you can see this deck has been stripped. But I wanted to show how I had things set up previously, just so that if anybody else wanted to follow the work of the off-board motor that I did in my previous video, then, then this might give you a hand. You can see on the deck I've drilled out the holes for the screws. This is because the plastic screws I was using were too large and were hitting the deck. So I've just drilled those out. It's only phenolic resin, it's dead easy. It's drilled out to about 10 mil. So if we lift off the plinth, the deck, carefully because I don't want to knock the motor. This is the motor mount I had set up, which I don't think I really showed properly previously. The motor would have been held down by two screws, but I haven't bothered because again, this is just a knock up, but I use four mil plastic nylon screws with a pan head. Those then attach into these rods, which I think are either 35 or 40 mil. I think these are the 40 mil variants. I just tried different rod heights until I found one that worked quite well. Uh, and then I adjusted the, the whole plinth up and down to match and managed to get where we needed to be. Now the critical thing that I found, which I, I sort of predicted, so I wasn't surprised, is the acrylic's very smooth. So the moment you tension the belt, the uh, motor base pulls forwards and you lose all your belt tension. The resolution for that turned out to be extremely simple. All I did was I went on Fleabay uh, and purchased one of these sticky rubber pads that you get for holding your phone onto dashboards and whatnot. Um, that's slightly smaller than the uh, motor plinth, but it doesn't matter. The point is it was that's very movable, whereas the moment you put it on the sticky pad, is going nowhere so that was able to maintain the motor tension very well indeed and this works very well uh, this is somewhat similar to the Michael Lim motor mount that he uses he on the other hand uses turn steel uh, I believe his motor directly connects the steel base which is felt to give some cooling personally uh, I like this better because Plastic does not transmit sound in the way that metal does, so I think you get a quieter mount. And the motor is floating free, so therefore you get a lot more cooling around the motor. I think it I can see some sense in transferring heat to something else, provided that the something else has a heat sink, which I don't believe the, the Michael Lim motor mount does. So I actually think it's probably a better solution. These are just uh, standoff studs. And there's a small amount of movement on them, but that's fine. It's more that once it's under tension, it's going to hold that. Uh, and I, I found the speed control on that was pretty good within the limitations of this motor, which has not got the properly rated capacitor and resistor on it. I just made a mistake when I bought this. I, I should have done more research. So this is the original Riga uh, capacitor and resistor. This is a, a secondary motor that I bought. It was half the price. Uh, and I thought that was just because it had no um, wires directly into the motor and I had to solder them onto myself. Um, but the result of the, uh, I checked the spec sheets, the capacitor and the resistor are the wrong values. And this vibrated a lot. So, um, Looking back on it, next time I'll just buy the normal uh, 110 volt motor that is advertised as being the one for record decks that does work with those values. So, but that's fine. Um, doesn't matter. Anyway, moving swiftly on. So, I said this would be a major change, and it is. This is the Azure turntable kit from SRM Tech. It's, the best I can tell, laser cut black acrylic. It's available in clear and in white. It looks weird in white. Um, the clear is quite cool, but um, I quite like the black. So at the moment, I've still got the cork platter mat because I was making a comparison really between the old system and new but this particular kit special offer comes with 
a couple of extra mats. One is a dampener and one is a under record mat thing. Um, I haven't yet used those. Uh, I will do some tests with those, see how much they dull the sound up when you knock it up from below as before. If we peel off the mat and the platter, you can see that we recycle the original Riga subplatter or whichever one you've changed to subsequently. I've actually gone back to this, frankly, I prefer it. Um, I have paid a little extra for the dampeners that go in the sort of orange segments, as it were, of the of the subplatter. And I have also, as people who've seen the earlier videos will be aware, I changed to use the off-board phono connectors. Uh, and at the moment, those are just held underneath here with some sticky fixes. Um, not very well. It's always fall, already fallen off once. Uh, so I might as well... No, I can't get it off now. Um, there are a couple of screw holes, but the, the tabs here that you can just about see there, they're too wide and they don't readily fit between the nut of the arm board and the lower motor base. So what I may do is I'll fold those in so that the screw holes are now inboard, drill a couple of holes and then that'll hold it securely and it won't get in the way. Or I may make my own separate uh, metal folded plate, God knows how, work it out later, um, so that the whole thing is smaller, maybe relocate the earthing pin around the side such that I can get the two phono connectors much closer together. That's just a minor, this is my problem, problem, um, but there you are. So if we turn this around again and lift off. Oh yes, now this is a good time to mention actually. One thing I have found is that the three mounting points are equidistant from the centre of the turntable, which was a reasonable design decision. However, the weight of the arm does make it pivot on these back two points. So it's definitely heavier in that direction than it is in that direction, as you would expect. So the net result is that there will be more force on these two mounting points than there will on this one at the front. So there will be an uneven loading on the sorbethane shock absorbers. I, if I were designing this myself, knowing this now, I might have rotated the whole lot around by, what's that, 60 degrees, such that there is a shock absorber point here and then sort of to here, so that the arm is much closer to the shock absorber point here. So therefore the whole deck is better balanced. It's not actually a problem as such, but I sort of feel that you should try and equalize things as best you can. Um, and effectively by moving the pivot point to here, you, this side of the board will balance that side of the board with the arm on it a lot better. Um, it's less of a problem when you put the weight of the um, the actual glass platter on it. It's pretty good because uh, the glass platter is so heavy. Um, and I suppose there is more that way than that way. Maybe it balances out, I don't know. Um, but it, it's a factor that I noticed certainly when I was putting it on without the glass platter. So maybe it does balance. Maybe you thought about it. It's just uh, something that struck me. Anyway, so the nice thing about this is the whole arm board lifts off and then you're left with the motor board. Now, this part was like £21, I think, just for a bit of laser cut, very thin acrylic. I mean, quite honestly, given that he's going to the trouble of machining all of this and all of the other board, could he not have just thrown that part in with the kit? Why charge separately for it? I suppose because you can, but quite honestly, 21 quid, I'm sure I paid for it for this. Um, it did give me a discount because of various issues I've faced on the build, but that's the, the headline price. 21 quid for an oval bit of plastic. Frankly, that's a blatant rip-off. That's at the most five quid if you're going to sell it separately, plus whatever the postage is 
you could pop it in a jiffy bag, three quid, you're looking at eight quid total. It's, it's, there's no way this is worth what you're charging. Um, and I think it does charge postage separately. So really, <laughs> I wouldn't be happy with that. I wasn't happy with it, but I had to do it. So whatever. Um, the 24 volt motor from Riga does not come with the metal tabs, which is why you've got to pay for the extra here. And then you just use the adhesive pad that the Riga motor comes with and then stick it down. So uh, at the moment, I've got this just using the metal screws that were supplied part of the kit. I'm experimenting with possibly using plastic stem razors in much the same fashion as I did with this. Um, and then maybe I'll also experiment with plastic screws. Again, it's all about reducing vibration through to the, to the base. Um, but that's a project, project for another time. And the other thing that I noticed is that this is the motor controller board. There are two slots cut here, which presumably are the idea being that you can uh, plug in the mains power. Um, the kit does come with three sticky dots that I have yet to use. But one thing I do notice is that those channels do not match up with that spacing which I find strange. Now this is in part because this is the way you put one of your sorbethane feet. There we are. So uh, you, you, you can't really, I mean, it's too wide. Uh, so maybe the motorboard would have been better off mounting somewhere else. Maybe the sorbethane dots should have been somewhere else. Well, it's a, it's a minor thing, but you've really got to decide whether you're going to go for the Neo supply or whether you're going to go for the original 24 volt supply, the just you know the wall wart, um, and then stick it in place. At the moment, I haven't stuck it in place. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter, so I might never stick it in place. Um, but of course, once you've stuck it, it's going to be very difficult to unstick it. Um, there is a slot here where you're supposed to run the wires to the switch, which normally goes here. I haven't fitted the switch and the reason I have done that is because I, I have a power socket on the wall with a switch on it so I can just turn on and off the wall wart directly from the wall switch so I don't need to worry about this, the, the, the switch side of things so all I've done is I've put a bridge wire on the board so that it is effectively always switched on um, and then I just turn on and off at the wall that's the easiest so uh, the other part of this is that it's got, it, it came with uh, the spikes underneath. Let's see if I can turn this over without causing too much chaos. Here we are. Um, so you've got the spikes underneath, which will screw for height adjust. Um, my coffee table is not quite level and there's a change of level because I've got some on the glass, some on the wood. So I've just got a couple of metal spaces that I've sort of put underneath before I even start just to give me a couple of mil extra and that makes the job an awful lot easier. So, yeah. Uh, the only other thing that I discussed with Stuart at SRM Tech, uh, the Allen studs here, perfectly good, fine. They're the ones that hold the spikes on. I might have been inclined to develop these such that they poke up a bit um, because... If we check the top plate, there are studs that are raised, and the purpose of those is to engage with the hole in the sorbethane. So therefore, if you're going to put a hole in the top, why not also put a hole in the bottom and put a stud that raises up there, such that you get a really good location for your sorbethane studs, so that the whole deck is locked in exactly the right position. It does not make sense to me to have uh, a location system for the top, but not for the bottom. So I may redevelop this later, such that there's a, a pokey uppy bit there as well. Um, won't be hard to do, and I think it's worth doing. Um, other than that, in terms of was the whole project worth undertaking? Absolutely, yes, no question. Uh, it is a very nice sounding system. Um, now... I did try to record it such that I could compare the two before and after. Um, 
but I messed up the recording, so I couldn't. Uh, I think I was using the microphone input of my uh, laptop, which didn't go so well. Um, <clears throat> so, but certainly, do it, does it sound better? Yes, it does. Uh, there is more clarity. There's less, you know, um, low end smudging. Really, I think it was worth doing overall. Yeah, it it it's definitely very very nice sound now. Well worth doing. I would recommend this kit, barring a few caveats as discussed. But yes, very much well worth doing. Really nice stuff. I I think that Riga probably are charging an awful lot of money for their turntable given it's just a piece of chip with some phenolic resin around it or plyboard, plyboard that they may use today if you priced up the all the components here separately you would end up at about what you would pay for a Riga Planer 3 anyway and I would be inclined to just do this and and buy the extra parts so um, you can get obviously the motor is 150 quid this whole kit was 330 you can buy a replacement um, central uh, sub platter and bearing the uh, I think you're looking about 40 50 quid for those um, the RB 330 arm I think is current and I've seen those at 250 quid you add it all up you end up at about the retail price of a plane R3 but actually the performance I think is much higher than a plane R3 so the question then would be, why bother giving the money to Riga for all of this stuff when you can just assemble it together yourself and get something that's actually rather nicer and looks nicer as well for about what you would spend anyway. Yes. So uh, next thing to do, I've got the main bearing spindle support pad, which is a small pad of Teflon PTFE that supports the bearing and reduces rumbling in the um, the the the, the bearing sleeve and it comes with their own oil which is black um, and then the other thing I've got is I've got a very nice gold ring cartridge to replace this one that's now 25 years old nearly I've gone for the gold ring Eroica HX which is a moving coil cartridge but it's high output so you can use it with a moving magnet furno stage which I'm going to give it a go I think that'll sound really nice so um, but you know do it one thing at a time more to come